Hello and welcome to The Print. I'm Akanksha Mishra and this is Scientifix where I will be taking you through this week's top science news from across the world. The first story today is a very topical study from Stanford University where researchers have mapped out the functional costs of carbon capture technologies, which are used to remove CO2 from the air in a bit to reduce carbon emissions. The point of the study was to see how economically viable it was to install and utilize carbon capture technologies to reduce CO2 emissions in the world. The answer? Not that viable. The study found through two model scenarios that it would be cheaper for the world to switch 100% to renewable energy sources by 2050 rather than to continue with fossil fuels and instead install carbon capture technologies to sequester the carbon dioxide that's being emitted. Basically, the authors of the study argue that at their current stage, carbon capture technologies are very expensive and energy intensive and that money can instead be spent on transitioning to renewable energy. The side benefits of switching to renewable energy include a reduction in pollution and the illnesses and other health effects that are caused by fossil fuel-related pollution and also an overall reduction in energy costs. But carbon capture technologies, on the other hand, even if they are powered by renewable energy sources, still would be more expensive and would not even have these side benefits. The answer, according to the authors, is very clear in this case about which one to choose. Let's move on to the next story, which is a little technical, but trust me, it's super interesting. For the first time ever, we have detected a neutrino with 220 PeV energy, which is like 220 million billion electron volts. This is a massive amount of energy to be expelled by a neutrino. And in fact, it confirmed to us that such high energy neutrinos even exist in the universe. The KM3 NET neutrino detector which is an international telescope that is placed underwater in the Mediterranean Ocean, first detected this neutrino in February 13, 2023. It took two years for scientists to study it and come out with their findings. Now let's look at a little history. Neutrinos are basically nearly massless, electrically neutral particles that don't interact with matter and are very mysterious. There's very little that we know about them except that they are unaffected by electromagnetic fields and they can pass through matter like nothing. Millions of neutrinos might be passing through you right now and you won't even know. The reason why they're important and why we have underwater detectors to understand them is the context and information that they provide to us about our cosmos. Such a high energy neutrino that we found could have originated from a very powerful cosmic accelerator like a gamma ray burst or a galaxy cluster or remnants from a supernova. Now imagine how much more we would know about the universe once scientists are able to detect the origin of this neutrino. Moving on, let's take a look at a new study from the University of California, Santa Cruz that analyzed the vulnerability of marine species, especially fish in California's coasts, but this time from a comprehensive perspective. The study did not just look at the ecological importance of the vulnerable fish species, but also their cultural importance to local fishing communities that live near the coast. The species like the Dungeness crabs, Pacific herring and red abalone are under threat due to rising sea temperatures and ocean acidification. Now, while the marine environment will definitely suffer with a decline in the population of these species, it would also economically affect fishing activities. Dungeness crab fishing accounts for $45 million worth of California's fishing business annually, and it's one of California's top commercial harvests. In their study, the UC Santa Cruz scientists have identified local Californian marine species and their levels of vulnerability to climate change in a bid to help the California Department of Fish and Wildlife with conservation efforts. Finally, let's end on a fun story by John Hopkins, which suggests gym routines for astronauts on future missions to the Moon and Mars. By testing apparatus on mice, the scientists have discovered that jumping exercises can help reduce the inevitable cartilage damage that happens when astronauts spend long periods of time in space. When any humans go to space, their muscles experience rapid decay and their bodies can develop osteoarthritis. This is why astronauts in the International Space Station or any space mission for that matter, they are mandated to perform a few hours of exercise and cardio daily to keep their muscles healthy and strong. Before, scientists were aware of running as a way to slow muscle decay. But now jump training three times a week shows signs of healthier cartilage in the mice on whom the experiment was performed. 
They suggest including jumping exercises in pre-flight training sessions for astronauts to prepare them for the grueling physical experience of going to space. That's all we have for today. Thank you for tuning into The Pit.